He was always there, lurking in the shadows, waiting for the right moment to strike. He was the boogeyman, the creature that haunted the nightmares of children and adults alike. He had no name, no face, no mercy. He fed on fear, and he was never satisfied. He had been around for centuries, moving from place to place, finding new victims to torment. He had many forms, many tricks, many ways to make people scream. He could be a dark figure in the corner of your eye, a whisper in your ear, a cold hand on your shoulder. He could be anything you feared, anything you hated, anything you loved. He had no rules, no limits, no boundaries. He could enter your dreams, your thoughts, your memories. He could make you see things that weren't there, hear things that weren't said, feel things that weren't real. He could make you doubt yourself, your sanity, your reality. He was the boogeyman, and he was coming for you. <laughs> Mr. Tingle thinks is always his best friend. I was about the age of fifteen. Up until then, I thought he was a real friend. But he started pulling out razor blades and switch blades, all kinds of weapons. It's, he started to hurt my life. He told me he was going to kill me if he told my parents. So I went years and years without telling my parents about Mr. Tico Jenkins until I was about the age of 15. Nah, I was 21. That's why I tell myself. It's particularly a real menace. Mr. Tinko Jinx was a good friend of mine up until like five or six. And then around the age of like seven to 14, I started realizing the real nuisance, the bad news.
These are days, Mr. Tinklejinx follows me everywhere I go. <laughs> I used to say, Mr. Tinklejinx, why are you wearing that funny makeup? Mr. Tinklejinx would just sit there and stare, as if he didn't know what I was talking about. It was like he didn't know he was wearing funny makeup. At first I thought it was like one of my uncles trying to prank me. <laughs> and then I started to realize Mr. Tickle Jinx was something else. Something from another world. Something that, that, that wasn't supposed to exist in, in, in our world. Mr. Tinkle Jinx would follow me down the street. He'd pop out of my toy box. He would do weird gestures like, Hello, it's me, Mr. Tinkle Jinx. And I would be like, I don't know what you want from me. I don't know why you bother me. But you are my best friend. And best friends stick together, right? And he, Mr. Tinkle Jinx, would be like, Pinky Thomas, I'll be your best friend forever. And I started to wonder, I'm like, am I going crazy? Is, 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 is Mr. Tinkle Jinx a figment of my imagination? Is Mr. Tinkle Jinx some kind of uh, alternate, like, uh, extra personality I have? I, I didn't know what to think of Mr. Tinkle Jinx. All I knew he, he was scaring me. And as I become an adult, I start to realize Mr. Tinkle Jinx ain't going away. Follows me down the street. He tries to find me anywhere I hide. He doesn't care. He ruins my relationships. Mr. Tinkle Jinx is a real son of a bitch. And that's all I know. I'm Hamburger the Cow. You eat me every night, don't you, Jack? You love eating little animals. I'm Chucky the Doll. Not that Chucky, Jack. That Chucky's scary. We're not scary, are we, Chucky? We're not scary at all. But what's scary is taking a beautiful animal and eating its bloody guts. I'm just joking, Jack. <laughs> we'll be best friends forever. <laughs> eating me, playing with dolls, playing with me. Eating dolls, eating me, Jack. <laughs> I never want to eat meat. I swear. I swear, Mr. Mr. Tingle Dinks made me do it. I was like, I don't want to eat cows. I don't want to eat pigs. I don't even want to eat chickens. But Mr. Tingle Dinks is like, you got to do it. You got to. You get you, you gotta feed your thirst for blood. And I was like, I don't wanna do it. And my parents is like, you can't eat your you 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 you, you gotta eat your meat. Eat that meat! And I was like, eat I'm not it, gonna Jack. do it. But 
but then I would see Mr. Tinkle Tink so on my shoulder. Tinkle Tinks! And he'd get her like, right. Eat that cow! Eat that savory eat that little cow! cow. Eat that cow. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, next thing I know, he'd be saying, You're a, you're a bloodthirsty killer. If you eat that cow, you are a murderer. And next thing I know, I was a murderer. More and more, he started making fun of my speech impediment. I said I will play the toys. fact that I couldn't say play games, play the hide and seek till the day you die. I didn't know what I said. But I'll never I was die. It was like tinkle yeah. tinks, tinkle tinks. Is that your real name? I don't know. Oh, but he started picking on me. Oh, what your like mommy and daddy made you, Jack? That's not your yeah, name. I forget their names. Sometimes I forget my own. Is it Fiddlestick? Is it Rumble Stuffkin? No. No, it's not Jack. That's not my name. You know my name, Jack. And you know I'll never leave you. <laughs> Twinkle Jinx. Twinkle Jinx. Twinkle started to disappear from my life and I was eventually I thought he's gone he's gone forever I don't gotta worry about him it was just part of my childhood imagination but then one day I was walking around my uh, my garage which is also my basement and there's a red curtain in there and uh, before I could even open it to see what was behind beyond the red curtain, which I was always afraid to or to look behind. Don't be afraid of the dead man. Been your best friend for a long, long time. Don't you know that you're a Taking out the garbage, Jack? Maybe you should take out your parents, Jack. They've been garbage your entire life. But not me, Jack. <laughs> your friend, Jack. I'm your friend, Toby. <laughs> Get it? Chucky? Doll? Friend to the end? Oh, Jack! We have so many wonderful games to play together. You ever play hide and seek in hell, Jack? Well, I have, and I've never been found! <laughs> Hit a hole in one, Jack. That's all you got to do. But if you don't, both your parents die. And then I'll be all you have left. But let's face it, they're worthless anyway. Nobody compares to me, Jack. I'm your best friend. So putt! Little do you know, Mr. Tinkle Jinx. I've been great at golf my whole life. My parents is the one who's taught me how to golf. And now I'm about to put you in your place. It all ends right here, Mr. Tinkle Jinx. Here we go. Three, two, one. Mr. Tinkle Jinx, you set me up. 
I would have had that any other time. We need to make another deal. This can't be. <laughs> Mr. Tickleton. It's so funny. This is a fair. Why do you think you haven't heard from your parents in years? You killed them years ago and blamed it on me. <laughs> You're the monster, Jack. You've always been the monster. I'm just your vessel. An imagined friend when you needed it most. Hey, Jack. What you doing with your mommy's intestines in your belly? <laughs> I decided to step behind that red curtain, but I did. I opened them up wide, 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 and I looked inside, and I didn't see him. He was nowhere to be found. I was always afraid to go behind that red curtain, but once I opened them up, I realized maybe my fears had vanished. Maybe, maybe, maybe this character didn't really exist. Maybe it was just part of my imagination. So, 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 so I opened them up and I, I looked inside and I peeked inside and I, I stared all around and I didn't see nothing. Nothing at all. Which was probably a warning sign that <laughs> things are about to go really bad. Mr. Tinkle Jinx. This is but you can call me Jack. And I killed my parents. And I love you. can question the veracity of Jack's story. You can dismiss Mr. Tinkle Jinx as delusion. You can take comfort in the notion that the boogeyman doesn't exist, but the next time you hear the floorboards creak, or see a stranger in front of your home, or feel like someone is staring at you, remember that fairy tales are often based on reality. Go on, Look out your window right now, unless you're afraid. You can always hide in the basement with Mr. Tinkle Jinx. Now, I, I need to admit it, but this might be the last thing you ever hear from me. I'm ready to confront my demon. I'm ready to take my head on. Like I said, it's, it's probably the last interview you're ever going to have with me. If I don't come back, know that I lost this battle. I, I lost this battle trying to win. For the sake of humanity, for the sake of all the angels up there, for the sake of all the children, have evil imaginary friends and for the sake of my parents who, who may suffer the same fate as my parents. This is for you. This is for me. This is for all of us. This is my life.